हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू डीजी मेंटो क्लास लेट्स सी दिस क्वेश्चन मैच लिस्ट वन एंड लिस्ट टू सो वी हैव बीन गिवन टू लिस्ट एंड एफ एन इज इक्वल्स टू ए एफ एन बाय एन डिवाइडेड बाय बी प्लस जी ऑफ एन इज अ डिवाइड एंड कॉन्कर रिकरेंस रिलेशन फॉर द लिस्टेड वन एल्गोरिदम्स मैच देयर रिकरेंस इन लिस्टेड टू so you can see that list 1 is divide and conquer based algorithm where we have binary search we have find maximum and minimum of a sequence merge sort fast matrix multiplication and the second is recurrence relation the respective recurrence relation we have let's see one by one so if we talk about binary search so let's discuss this question in this slide everyone Let's talk about one by one. Let's take binary first search. Binary first, binary search. So when we talk about binary search, so typically binary search is divided into the half. So this is our binary search like this. So it is always divided into half, right? Binary search properties either a parent will have one, zero, or two children. like that and it is equally divided into halves so search space time leading to the recurrence relation of the form which is fn equals to fn by 2 plus constant this is what we have okay let's see the next which is maximum find maximum and minimum find maximum and minimum so finding the maximum and minimum of a sequence by divide and conquer we usually split the problem into two half and after that we have to combine the result also so first what we do for this first we divide divide the problem into Two half, and after that, we also have to combine the results. We have to combine the results. So that is why. What is the f n here? So f n equals to two times of f n by two. N by two. Plus C. So this is our result for maximum and minimum. After that, the third one here is merge sort. So what we do in merge sort? We split the array into two half. So let me write this. We split the array into Two half. After that, sort each half, and then merge them, and then merge them. So this results in f n equals to two f n by two plus n plus n here. Okay, let's see now fast matrix multiplication. So Stresen's algorithm is used for matrix multiplication. So let's write this as well. So the fourth one here is fast. matrix multiplication fast matrix multiplication here is it is like stresen's algorithm so this is like stresen's algorithm and often involves 
an offer involves more complex more complex recurrence relations so here we have more complex recurrence relation typically involving higher constants okay so here for the matrix multiplication we always use strassen's algorithm and this this involves more complex recurrence relation typically higher constants okay and more complex term more complex terms and the terms are more complex right so for this you have to remember this the recurrence relation for fast matrix multiplication which is f of n equals to 7 f n by 2 plus 15 n square by 4 right so this is what you have to remember so we have seen binary search which is this form the recurrence relation is of this form after that find maximum and minimum we have seen this form and merge sort the recurrence relation is this and the fast matrix multiplication this is the recurrence relation all right everyone so what do you think is the correct answer as per to all the discussion so here binary search as we have find it out binary search will be f of n which is equals to f n plus 2 find maximum and minimum of sequence so this will be f of n equals to 2 f n by 2 plus 2 after that merge sort will be here merge sort don't get confused because this is 2 and there will be a cons uh, there will be n so merge sort will be 2 f of n by 2 plus n and here fast matrix multiplication this will be f of n equals to 7 f n by 2 plus 15 n square by 4 so from this what we can say that what is the answer so a is matching with fourth one so we can directly eliminate option 1 option 2 option 3 and we can say that option a is absolutely correct so i hope you got this question everyone let's see the next question so which of the following control problems does not exist when processes are unaware of each other during interaction option a is mutual exclusion option 2 is data coherence option 3 is starvation and option d is deadlock so what do you think is the correct one here so if we talk about mutual exclusion then it is the control of problem it is the control problem where only one process can access a resource at a time to prevent conflicts if we talk about uh, d which is data coherence so data coherence ensures that all processes see the same data at the same time preventing inconsistencies if we talk about starvation starvation occurs when a process is prematurely denied access to a resource it needs uh, it needs due to scheduling or priorities issue that means one process is only running it is not letting letting the other process the reasons may be whether it is not scheduled whether it is a small process or long process it based on the algorithm or some priority issues that the other process can starve and if we talk about deadlock so it is a situation where two or more processes are unable to proceed because each is waiting for the other to release a resource let's say i have one resource and my friend has one resource and my friend is waiting for me to get that resource and my friend is waiting but we are not ready to release any of the resources so this situation is called as deadlock our question is which of the following control problem does not exist when processes are unaware of each other during interaction so here the the control problem that does not exist when the processes are una unaware of each other during interaction is mutual exclusion okay so that is called as mutual exclusion because when only one process can access a resource at a time to prevent conflicts 
सो हियर म्यूचुअल एक्सक्लूशन इज द कंट्रोल प्रॉब्लम वेर ओनली वन प्रोसेस कैन एक्सेस अ रिसोर्स एट अ टाइम टू प्रिवेंट कॉन्फ्लिक्स सो आई होप यू गॉट दिस क्वेश्चन एज वेल वाई द आंसर इज म्यूचुअल एक्सक्लूजन लेट सी द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन नाउ द हाइट ऑफ अ बाइनरी सर्च ट्री फॉर द वर्ड्स बनाना पीच एप्पल पियर कोकोनट मैंगो एंड पपाया यूजिंग अल्फाबेटिकल ऑर्डर इज so to determine now let's look at the solution let's look for the solution here so as you can see here to determine the height of a binary tree search which is bst created by inserting the words banana peach apple pear coconut mango and papaya in the alphabetical orders follow these steps so first one is insert the word into bst first is first step is that insert insert words insert words into the into the bst so start with the first word and insert each subsequent words based on the alphabet so first we have to insert banana it becomes the root after that we have to insert peach comes after banana so it goes to the right because as b and p if we will compare so p has a uh, greater one after that if we will insert apple so it comes before banana that is why we will go to the left so let's try to make the tree as well here so in the bst we are inserting this so banana will look like this after that peach is coming so it will go in this side apple comes before banana so it will go here this side after let's see now pear so comes after peach it comes after peach so it goes to the right of the peach so here the pear will be here the pear will be after that coconut so coconut comes after banana but before peach so it goes to the right of the banana and left of the peach so here coconut will be there okay after that if we have to insert mango so it comes after coconut but before peach so it goes to the right of coconut so here mango will be there and if we have to insert papaya so it comes after pear and it goes to the right of the pear so papaya will go here so this is the whole tree which is created all right everyone now we have to determine the height of the bst the height of a tree is the number of ages so i will write height of the tree height of the tree is it is the number of edges on the longest longest path from the root to a leaf root to a leaf so path from banana to papaya if we consider so what is the path it is from banana to peach peach to pear pear to papaya so if we will see this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 so three edges are coming now if we talk about the next path which is from banana to mango so it is from banana after that it is peach coconut and mango so here are also three edges so the longest path and this one we cannot count because in the right hand side only we can count for the we can see for the maximum number of ages maximum number of path or the longest path we can consider so here the longest path has three edges so the height of the tree is height of the tree is 3 so that is why which is the correct one option b here is correct
okay so i hope you got this as well now let's see this question match list 1 with list 2 list 1 is given as batch multi programming b is time sharing c is monitor d is rented procedures list 2 is allows more efficient use of memory use no longer has direct access to the processor maximize processor use minimize response time now what is batch multi batch multi programming this technique allows multiple job to be proceed in batches maximizing procedure use okay so i think we should write what all these things are so that we can easily match with the list too so let's do it so let's start with the first one which is batch multi programming multi programming this technique this technique allows multiple jobs to be proceed in batches in batches maximizing maximizing processor use second is time sharing time sharing means in time sharing systems user share d processor and they do not and they do not have direct access to it they do not have direct access to it third is monitor what is called as monitor monitors are used in time sharing time sharing systems to manage to manage resources and minimize response time for users response time for users and if we talk about the last which is rent procedures rent rent procedures so these procedures these procedures that can be interpreted or interrupt and safely called again safely called again allowing more efficient use of memory use of memory so i hope now what is batch multi programming what is time sharing monitor retrain procedures are clear now it is more easy for you to match so first is batch multi programming allows more efficient use of main programming uh, main memory no it is for don't you think it is for retrain procedure right it will match to that because in the this line itself we have seen it allows more efficient use of memory and main memory is also a memory user no longer that has direct access to the processor so what do you think this is the correct one for whom this is correct one this is for time sharing and maximize processor use this goes for this goes for batch multi programming 
and minimum minimize response time this goes with monitor so what is the correct one a with third a with third one b with second one c with fourth one d with first so here third so this is cancel this is cancel out of this two we have to see now b is with second one so definitely two is not the correct one first one is absolutely correct so i hope you got this question as well let's see this question which of the following is the function of semantic analysis phase of the compilation process first is type conversion second is tokenization third is loop optimization fourth is data flow analysis so what is semantic analysis phase this is the phase of compilation which is responsible for ensuring that the source code is systematically correct or not or semantically correct or not and this involves i'll tell you what this phase involves this involves first is checking for type second is it checks for consistency third is scope resolution and fourth is type conversions this is what it involves and what is type conversion so it is a critical part of the semantic analysis phase as it ensures that the operation are performed on compatible data types so that is what it is so that is why we can say that type conversion now if we talk about what is tokenization so this is the part of lexical analysis phase lexical analysis phase and what this involves the source code is broken into tokens okay and this loop optimization is a part of code optimization phase and here what happens the efficiency of loops in the code is improved that means the code code is optimized in terms of everything if we talk about data flow analysis so this is part of the intermediate intermediate code generation and and optimization optimization phase which focuses on the flow of data within the program okay everyone so i hope you got this question let's see now the next question for the following languages for regular languages and context free languages which is not correct option a is both are under union operation option b is both are closed under concatenation operation option c is both are closed under intersection operation option b option d is both are closed under complementation operation option e is both are closed under clean star algorithm or operation not algorithm it is operation so let's let's find out that regular languages and context free languages are both class of formal languages which are used in automata theory and formal language theory now if we talk about option a then both regular language and context free language are closed under union operation if we talk about example then let's say that if l of l1 and l2 are regular then regular or context free language so we can say that l1 union l2 is also regular or context free context free language context free language so this we cannot mention because which is not correct that we have to find so this we have to 
make sure that there is not sometimes in hurry what we do we just read which is correct and we try to mark this and we try to search for the answer and here when we make mistake so that is why we have to underline such important keywords which is not so this we will not select after that if we see second option which is option b both are closed under concatenation operation so both regular language and context free language are closed under concatenation operation as well that means if l1 and l2 are regular languages or context free languages then definitely their concatenation will also result in uh, regular languages or context free languages let's suppose l1 and l2 both are regular and if i do the concatenation l1 concatenation l2 the resultant will be regular now if we suppose say that l1 is context free and l2 is also context free then l1 dot l2 which is concatenation is also context free got so this is also clearly not our option now let's see this both are closed under intersection operation here we have to focus more because regular languages are closed under intersection operation but context free languages are not necessarily closed under intersection operation that is what it means l1 and l2 are regular their intersection result will also be regular but if l1 and l2 are context free then their intersection may or may not be context free so here c is the correct one if we talk about d which is both are closed under complementation operation now regular languages are closed under complementation operation but context free languages are not necessarily closed under complementation operation we can understand like this l1 is regular language then its complement is also regular language but if l1 is context free language then its complement may or may not be context free so here d is also correct if we talk about e both are closed under clean star operation so both regular language and context free language are closed under clean star operation that means if l is regular or context free language then l star which is clean star is also regular or context free that means l is regular l star is also regular if l is context free l star is also context free so this is basic uh, this is not supposed to be our answer and some additional thing also i have to say that closure properties are important in study of formal languages as they help us in understanding the limitation and capabilities of different language classes understanding this closure property helps in the design of efficient algorithm for language recognition and parsing and regular languages can be recognized by infinite automata while context free language can be recognized by push down automata so this is you have to keep remember so according to this what do you think is the correct answer it is c and d that means we can say that option 3 is absolutely correct okay now let's see this question everyone match list 1 with list 2 so here list 1 is backtracking b is infinite language with matching numbers c is canonical lr parser post corresponds problem list 2 is automata undecidable problem predictive parser large number of states so what do you think is the correct one here now backtracking matches with undecidable problem because backtracking up till what is a undecidable problem so this will match to here infinite language which matching numbers so we can make it as automata matching numbers so that is why we can say that a here is the correct one after that canonical lr parser matches with predictive parser so here this will be the third one after that co post corresponds problem matches with the larger number of state so that is why this is fourth one so here a is matching with a is matching with second this one b is matching with fourth okay so one thing it is wrong that is c this a will match with fourth one which is large number of states after that b will match with third one which is infinite state 
and C will match with the second one and D will match with ith. Okay? So that is why the correct answer here will be A is matching with fourth, B is matching with third, C is matching with the second one and D is matching with one. So here something is wrong here because as you can see that here one and here one this cannot be true. That is why. So the correct answer here is I am writing the correct answer which is the options are not correct itself. So the correct answer I will write. Backtracking matches with undecidable problem. Infinite language with matches with automata matching numbers and uh, canonical LR parser matches with predictive parser and post correspond problem matches with large number of states large number of states okay everyone so this is the correct let's see this question now they are asking the output of c++ program is you have to evaluate the output so let's see this question the output of the following c++ program include is given stdioh uh, the header file is given int main void and here we have int x okay a memory is created for x let's say 100 then this is a pointer p so this pointer p is also created like this now for now they will have garbage value because nothing is assigned in this step x is 30 that means here in place of garbage the value is 30 after that x will be assigned now this is incorrect so in c and c++ you cannot directly assign an integer value to a pointer variable so i will write few points here first point is we cannot directly assign an integer value to a pointer variable pointer variable second is to store the address to store the address of a variable in a pointer we need we need to use the address of point address of operator which is this one okay so if we have to correct this then this line should be like this p is equals to like this after that it will be giving us the correct answer if it is so then it will point to x and the result value will be value of x which is 30. So 30 is also correct and value of x is also correct. But here now this is not the case. So here we will say that option 4 is correct which will give us error. This is the error statement. All the syntax is error. So you have to learn this. You have to remember this two points. Okay. I hope you got this everyone. Let's see this question now.